Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, the Kell Brook, uh, Michael Zarafa fight went off the air, uh, probably about 10 minutes ago. Um, as you all know, I have probably been the biggest, uh, Kell Brook fan and supporter since I've been on YouTube. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've supported him in the Errol Spence fight, supported him when he fought Triple G, thought he'd win both of those fights. Um, you know, and, and I thought at one time that Kill was one of the best pound found in the sport. Um, and as in a way, I still did, uh, not not top five or top ten, uh, but I felt that he still was one of the best. I had never seen the guy uh, get out boxed in a fight. You know, he lost two fights due to injury, and one because of training through a towel in. All right. Um, and he didn't get out box tonight. But tonight feels like a loss. It feels like a loss. Uh, I wore my Kill Brook uh, skull cap in support. I wore my Kill Brook shirt in support. Uh, you all know I call it like it is, man. Uh, I'm not like a lot of these fanboy channels on YouTube that will uh, do anything to sugarcoat their favorite fighters or whoever they support. Uh, the fact of the matter is, the end is near for Kilbrook. Um, I probably would be calling for him to retire if uh, he didn't have the con fight on the table, and if I didn't think he had, uh, you know, a, a real chance in winning that fight. Um, before this fight, I felt that um, I felt that if he he would probably beat Khan. Uh, probably within the first six to eight rounds, you know, basically just land on the guy, and uh, that would be it. Uh, but now, um, you know, it's more of a pick 'em fight. Some people might even see Khan as a favorite. You know, if this guy Michael Zarafa was hitting Kilbrook as much as he did, man, you know, what would Amir Khan do? You know, uh, Amir Khan would should uh should be clamoring for this fight, man. You know, he should be wanting this fight ASAP, immediately, man. You know, Eddie's saying he can make double uh, what he make in fighting Terrence Crawford. You know, and and a fight that he'd have more of a chance in. You know, I still favor, uh, I still favor Kill in the fight, but um, you know, he, he got hit way too much tonight, man. He got hit way too much. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna put it on this uh, Fuchs guy. Although, you know, if Kale was to continue, he needs to get another trainer, man. Uh, he needs to get another trainer. You know, this guy Fuchs, he might be a good trainer uh, at some point, uh, but he needs, he, you know, Kale being a high level fighter, he needs a high level trainer, man. He's not even a trainer where he is calling the shots in training camp. You know. You know, Kale saying that, you know, he was basically running the training camp, doing what he wanted when he wanted. You know, they said in the press conference that, you know, that, that Kale was having motivate the trainer to get up to, to to start training. You know, trainer wanted to chill out. You know, Kale they had, they had to get him going, you know. Not not good things, man. And, uh, you know, I thought it was a terrible mistake, man, when uh, Kale was cutting the extra weight just to prove a point. You know, this fight was set at 154 pounds. He should have cut the 154 and stopped, man. You know, there was no need for him to, you know, be going down to 150. You know, drain himself even more. You know, that's going to affect him in the fight. You know, possibly having less power, less energy in the fight. You know, he was a huge favorite in this fight. He was a huge favorite to get a stoppage in this fight. Uh, I played the stoppage. A lot of people played the stoppage. I think when it first opened, it was like a minus 380, a minus 3 something. And uh, hell, when I got in on it um, early early this morning, it was like a minus five fifty, you know. And this guy went full twelve rounds for Kill Brook, man. Um, you know, and and you know, I I, I want to say that the guy, you know, maybe the guy was tough, but hell, we saw him get blown out bad against Kid Chocolate, you know, some years ago. You know, not the guy bad, put him in the hospital, put him on a stretcher, you know. Um. So, you know, while Kell Brook won the fight officially, while it, it was a, an official win, man, 
in a way, it was a loss, man. It was a big loss. His stock went down. Uh, the luster of the Amir Khan fight took a hit. You know, at, at best, that's an 0-2 fight. You know, forget a stadium. Uh, if that fight was to happen, which I don't think it will. I think Khan don't want to fight. I think he's been ducking the fight for years, and he still don't want to fight unless he sees this and changes his mind. Uh, but, um, you know, this this was, uh, you know, this was, in, in many senses, man, a loss for Kell Brook, man. This stock, you know, took a huge hit, man. He looks, he, he doesn't look like, um, you know, a prime fighter, you know, offensively still good, but defensively not good at all, man. Uh, he got hit way too much in this fight, man. He got hit way too much against a C-level fighter and is a rougher, man. A, a top 10 guy, but uh, a guy whose name doesn't come off the tongue when you think of top 10, uh, you know, guys in the sport, man, at 154. You know, uh, he was hit way too much by this guy. If this guy's hitting kill Brook like this, man, you know, what do you think, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what, what would happen if Jamiro Charlo was hitting kill Brook this much, man? Jaime Mangia, uh, Jared Hurd, you know, uh, hell, even, even the, the regular WBA champion, uh, Brian Carlos Castano, you know, I have not seen a full fight of his, but I've seen highlights of him, you know, that dude can fight, man. You know, that that wouldn't be easy built for Kill Brook to get. Uh, you know, all these guys, man, um, it would be dangerous for Kell Brook, man. Uh, you know, guys that big, you know, with with that kind of power at 54, man. You know, uh, you know, I was giving him, you know, chance against Jamiro Charlo. If he, if he's getting hit this much by Jamiro Charlo, man, you know, he's probably gonna get stopped. Uh, Mangia, Jared Hurd, you know, forget about it, man. Them, them big ass cruiserweights. Nah, man, especially Jared Hurd, man. You know, that, that's the last guy he needs to fight at 54. Uh, and like I said, uh, Brian Carlos Castano, man, a volume puncher, man. You know, a big guy who has some pop, too. So, um, you know, 54 is not looking good. And, hell, as far as 47 goes, you know, if he's, you know, draining himself, you know, what's he going to have in the fight? I don't even think he should be fighting at uh, 47 anymore, man, while he's talking about it. You know, I was going to do a video talking about Kell Brook being, a, you know, a three-division champ. He need to have goals at being a champ at 54, being a champ at uh, at 160. You know, there's currently a vacant IBO belt uh, that he could have, you know, put himself in position to fight for. Uh, I want him to go after that belt, man. Uh, hell, I contacted IBO and asked. And, uh, you know, they said that, uh, you know, if, if he won tonight and if he said that he was moving up, that uh, they would re-rank him because I think he's like number two with the IBO at uh, 154. And uh, they were waiting to see what Triple G would do. Um, you know, he could have possibly put himself in position for that title. And, uh, you know, just not, not a good performance, man. Uh, you know, the only, the only two fighters that come to mind that I give him a shot against at, at the high level, man, is, uh, Amir Khan because of the chin. You know, the volume could give Kell Brook problems. Uh, you know, with being this defensively poor. Uh, but you know he can he can he can land flush on Khan. I, I think at some point he will definitely find Khan's chin, you know, because Kale is still uh very good offensively, and uh, that would be it. Uh, but that's really that, and you know because of the chin, because of the money that he can make, that's really the only fight I'm calling him to to, to take and make, man. Um, you know possibly probably a career high payday for Kale Brook. And then after that fight, I think he should definitely retire. I called him to retire after the Errol Spence fight when he had the uh, second eye injury, you know. Um, but um, as I was calling him to retire after uh, Errol Spence, but, um, you know, he decided to continue. Um, you know, at, at 47, uh, other than Khan, the other fight that, um, that I would call for him to take, possibly would be Sean Porter because he already beat Sean Porter and uh you know his style uh, unless he's not you know getting clocked in the face you know like he was tonight you know he outboxed Sean Porter I thought he dominated that fight uh that would be the only fight uh other than Khan I would call for him to take uh mainly because he beat him already you know and uh if he could be on like he was on that night he could possibly beat him again but the only thing is Sean Porter 
has uh you know two mandatories to fight. You know, he's gonna have to fight Ugas and then if he can get past Ugas, you know, he's gonna have the Keith Thurman uh rematch. Uh, you know, so you know, Sean Porter's tied up for two thousand nineteen. So, you know, that fight is nowhere uh close for Kill Brook. Um you know, if he fights uh, Keith Thurman, you know, Keith Thurman uh, really hasn't had a, a significant knockout. Uh, you know, I, I can't even think of the last knockout he had in that, the last stoppage. But, uh, you know, but he has power. You know, and if a, a world-class Keith Thurman uh, is hitting Kill Brook this much, you know, I don't think it's going to go good, man. Um, you know, Errol Spence, forget about it. You know, with, with him not being in Rolling Clean by some program, you know, uh, tested under USADA where he could use stimulants if he wanted to. You know, forget about it, man. Uh, you know, uh, and Terrence Crawford, he gets stopped in that fight. You know, it's called him like it is, man. It's a Killbrook fan, you know. Um, you know, I have not made a video yet talking about Adonis Stevenson. Uh, you know, in, in, in the aftermath of that. But, uh, you know, I, I am not, uh, you know, I'm not one of these people who are like, oh, well, we shouldn't tell them when to retire. We shouldn't say. We should let them do it when they want. No, man. I call for these guys to retire when I think they don't have them no more, man. You know, when I when I see slippage, when they're not the same, when they're not what they once were, man. And uh, I called for Donna Stevenson to retire big time after the Badu Jack fight. I went back and listened to that post-fight idea for that fight. I encourage everybody uh, watching this video, you know, to go back and watch that post-fight idea on Donna Stevenson and Badu Jack. I saw the slippage and I called for Donna Stevens to, to retire, man. And uh, what happened to Adonis was a thousand percent preventable, man. If the guy had retired, he would have never been in that fight uh, for that shit to happen to him, man. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying it now, man. Uh, the people around Kill Brook, uh, I'll be sending this video to Kill Brook as a fan, man. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it was a bad trainer, the bad training, a novice trainer that had Kill Brook uh, looking like this, man. You know, he just looked defensively poor, man. You know, and as, as, as he ages, his reflexes are going to uh, get even worse, man. And, uh, you know, if he's getting tagged this much by a Zarafa, man, you know, high-level, stronger punching guys, man, you know, Kilbrook going to be taking damage, unnecessary damage that he don't need to take, man. Um, uh, you know, Zarafa, uh, he won the eighth round uh, for sure. And uh, the ninth, maybe some could give it to him. I wouldn't because I think Kale controlled the beginning and the end of that round. But uh, I think he landed th about three good shots on uh, Kale in the middle of that round. And then in, in the 12th round, uh, you know, Kale came out. He was wanting to close the show. He was wanting to close it early in the fight. But, uh, you know, he was wanting to close the show. Then he got countered. He got hit hard. And then he, he started backing up, went to the ropes, uh, and started going back for the first time in the fight, man. You know, he was coming forward mostly in this fight, uh, being a, being an aggressor, standing in the pocket. He was getting hit way too much, man, uh, way too much. You know, in my opinion, uh, Kell Brook needs to, uh, you know, you know, if, if he continues, man, like I said, really the only fight he should continue for is uh, Amir Khan. Other than that, man, I, I think he needs to call it a day, man. You know, uh, for, forget Jared Hurd, forget Jared Hurd. You know, the guy's too big and too strong, man. You know, hell, and forget the other champs at 54 too, man. Even the regular champ, Costano, man. No way. No way. 160? Nope. Not calling for Kale to go over to 160 no more to, you know, to win, uh, you know, to win a belt in a possibly a third division. You know? Uh, so, you know, if if he continues, man, he, he needs to go to a high-level trainer, specifically a trainer that focuses on defense, man. You know, but kills at, at a point at age in his career, uh, to where I don't see the, the the defense improving that much, even if he focused on it, you know, big time. You know, offense offensively he's fine. You know, taking a look at sound, you know, um, you know, sharp. Uh, he was throwing some uppercuts that were ill advised in my opinion. You know, searching for him instead of letting them come to him. You know, catching the guy naturally. You know, guy standing way out and he lunging. You know, with uppercuts missing. Leaving himself open for for a counter, man. You know, a devastating counter. Um, but you know, like a Ronnie Shields, you know, who who worked with a Pernell Whitaker and Arizona Lar, you know, uh, 
a, a trainer like that, uh, you know, a high level Hall of Famer like Freddie Roach, you know, um, or the, you know, the Mayweather uh, Club, the Mayweather Gym, you know, uh, defensive minded guys, but uh, you know, it's John Fuchs, man, um, you know, I know they might be friends and all that, man, giving the guy a shot. You might be happy with him, but, you know, you're a high-level fighter, man. You need to get a high-level trainer, man. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm not putting this on Fuchs, man. I'm putting this on Kill Brook. I think that, uh, that he has just slipped, man, to the point to where it's time to call it a day before he suffers a serious injury, man. You know, we saw what happened to Adonis Stevenson. Um, I called for Adonis to retire. He did not. And, uh, you know, sadly, the guy's life it's probably not going to be the same, man, when when that shit did not need to happen to him. And uh, I, I would say for any boxer, man, any boxer I see slipping, whether I'm a fan or not, if it's time for him to go, I'm going to come over and say it's time for him to go, man. And uh, really kill Bruce should retire after this fight. But uh, if he can get the con fight, you know, if, if he can get the con fight, he should take that fight, you know, take that payday. I, I'm favoring him to knock out con. You know, he, he might get tagged. But uh, at some point, he's going to find Khan Shin. And uh, I don't think Khan's going to be able to stand up to uh, kill Bruce Punch, man. Uh, other than that, I'm not really calling him to fight um, anybody else, man. Uh, any any top, any high-level fighters, I'm telling you, all these guys are going to want to fight Kill Brook, man. Keith Thurman, um, hell, Sean Porter might even want to rematch. Errol Spence, he ain't going to make excuses no more. He'll be wanting to... Uh, to fight uh, Kell Brook in uh, Dallas with USADA testing, with no body testing, you know, that'd be terrible for Kell Brook. Um, you know, Terrence Crawford, you know, that that's a stoppage win for Terrence Crawford, man. You know, the guy's too slick, too great offensively, and, um, you know, Kell Brook getting, getting hit too much, man. Uh, so, you know, 47, you know, he between the uh, basically a, a rock and a hard place, man. You know, really should should not be fighting at 47, but the guys at 54, the champs, they're going to be too big and too strong for him, man. He gets hit and hurt by them guys, man. You know, so I think that's it, guys. Uh, you know, call them like it is, man. You know, kill Bruce at the end, man. You know, other than the con fight, it's time to go. Uh, you know, Eddie looked very sad after the fight when he got in the ring. He had the long, sad face, man, you know. He got in the ring. He said that he looked at social media, seeing what people were saying about Kell Brook. Eddie Hearn know what he saw, man. Uh, I'm saying this to Eddie, too. Match room. You know, Kell Brook's family. You guys just called for Kell to, uh, to get ready to retire, man. You know, uh, you know before he, he you know, suffers a serious injury and gets hurt in the ring, man. So, that's it, guys. Uh, oh, and let, and let me uh, ask for uh, all the guys in the U.K. who watch it on Sky. Uh, I'm, I don't know if Adam Smith called this fight or not, but... I would love for you guys to, to tell me what the Sky broadcast was saying. You know, Johnny Nelson, who was in the Ingle gym. I saw him um, in the crowd talking to Dom Ingle after the fight. You know, I, I kind of got a feeling like they was kind of like having like a sad moment about Kill Brook, man. Uh, but you guys can let me know what the Sky comment commentator said, what the Sky commentary said. You know, if they were criticizing Kill, they say he looked poor for time him to retire, whatever. I'd love to know what they said. And uh, we'll let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'll check in with y'all soon, man. Thanks for watching.